A verse-by-verse -verse study in the book of Proverbs, ESV, with Irv Rish, chapter 18. What does Proverbs chapter 18 mean? The first nine statements of this passage mostly revolve around the need for discernment in judgment and speech. A person who refuses to seek additional wisdom from others is fighting against truth. This is connected to the modern concept of the echo chamber and the person who is only interested in justifying their own views. A characteristic of foolishness is the inability to control one's speech. This can lead to a damaged reputation, or even physical violence from someone who's been offended. Solomon also stresses the importance of fairness in matters of justice, the dangers of laziness, and the insidious nature of gossip, Proverbs 18 verses 1-9. Humility and a sincere search for truth are common themes in the next several Proverbs. God's name, meaning His character, nature, and promises, is compared to a place of safety. In contrast, people often fool themselves into thinking that money or their own ability are reliable foundations. Not only should a person be humble in their personal life, but they should apply the same attitude towards matters of judgment. Many claims sound convincing, at first, only to fall apart under scrutiny. A wiser person tries to find out more information, rather than arrogantly jumping to conclusions. This passage also includes a remark about the supreme importance of hope. A person can get through almost any hardship, but once someone loses hope, they are truly crushed and defeated, Proverbs 18 verses 10-15. The last segment of this chapter gives observations about perception and relationships. Wealth can make others more receptive, and unfortunately often lets a person get away with being rude or entitled. Solomon provides warnings about undue conflict. He notes the enhanced bitterness which comes when close friends and family have a falling out. Several proverbs mention objectivity and the need to carefully guard one's speech. An especially famous phrase at the end of this chapter notes that true friends can be more loyal than even one's own family, Proverbs 18 verses 16 to 24. Chapter Context Chapter 18 continues a long string of wise sayings attributed to Solomon. These began in chapter 10 and will continue through chapter 22. This section contains numerous references to fair-mindedness and seeking out truth from multiple sources. Diligent responsibility, in words, actions, and beliefs, is a notable emphasis in this segment. Verse by verse. Verse 1. Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire, he breaks out against all sound judgment. This proverb speaks out against being hardened to the views and experiences of others. The context implies that this isolation is less about distance and personality and more about beliefs and understanding. The isolating person exhibits a superior attitude, as if other people's judgment is beneath them. Such a person can never expand their horizons, they will be left with only limited knowledge. This verse indicates that the isolating person is not being passive. Such an attitude means fighting against good sense. The Hebrew word translated in the ESV as breaks out can also be rendered as quarrels. In modern English, a person who isolates themselves from anything they don't want to hear is said to be in an echo chamber. The next proverb, Proverbs 18 verse 2, evokes a similar idea, that some people don't want to hear other opinions. They just want to express their own opinions, and, in the case of an echo chamber, hear those same opinions spoken by other people. Such attitudes are not healthy. It's important for Christians to examine their positions and seek truth, even if it means admitting error, Acts 17 verse 11, Proverbs 18 verses 13 and 17. Believers should not participate in the sins of unbelievers, but it's not wise, or possible, to eliminate all contact with unbelievers. The Apostle Paul noted that believers would need to withdraw from the world to totally separate themselves from sinners, 1 Corinthians 5 verses 9-10. Although Jesus associated with tax collectors and sinners, Matthew 11 verse 19, he remained sinless, Hebrews 4 verse 15. 
he emphasized that he was not removing his followers from the world but was sending them into the world, John 17 verse 18. When he issued the Great Commission, he commanded his followers to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to everyone, Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20. Context Summary Proverbs 18 verses 1 to 9 touches on themes such as arrogance and closed-mindedness. A common thread in this section is how unwise speech, or failure to be open-minded and diligent, can lead to serious consequences. Verse 2. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding but only in expressing his opinion. The book of Proverbs contrasts foolishness with godly wisdom. True wisdom is rooted in pursuit of God and His truth, Proverbs 1 verse 7. The prior proverb noted that those who isolate from sound judgment are trying to ignore anything not in line with their preferences. There's an arrogance behind someone who separates themselves from all other opinions, as if no one else can contribute to his understanding. A fool isn't driven by a desire to understand, all that matters to the fool is saying what's on their mind. One might say such a person has a closed mind and an open mouth. Discussions become bitter arguments when we fail to listen with the intent of understanding. A foolish approach is to listen only so one knows when they can start talking. Many Pharisees in Jesus' day refused to learn from him. While others were astonished at Jesus' teaching, the Pharisees smugly thought they knew all about the Old Testament. However, Jesus rebuked them by saying, His, the Father's, voice you have never heard, His form you have never seen, and you do not have His word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one whom He has sent. You search the Scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness about Me, yet you refuse to come to Me that you may have life, John 5 verses 37-40. Verse 3. When wickedness comes, contempt comes also, and with dishonor comes disgrace. The first phrase of this proverb seems to suggest that sinful attitudes lead people to be arrogant. That's true, the prior two proverbs noted that an ungodly resistance to wisdom leads to arrogant isolation, Proverbs 18 verses 1-2. However, the main point here is clarified by the second phrase, living wickedly leads a person into shame and humiliation. At the most important level, this shame comes from God, who has contempt for the wicked person, Isaiah 23 verse 9, Psalm 59 verse 8. Man was created in God's image, Genesis 1 verses 26-27, so our purpose is to glorify Him. When we act against His truth, Proverbs 1 verse 7, we necessarily bring dishonor on ourselves, this is a natural consequence of sin. Other Proverbs have noted that sin can have earthly consequences, as well, Proverbs 10 verse 14, 16 18. One of these is the loss of reputation one can experience when they act wickedly. Adam and Eve discovered this fact and they rebelled against God in the Garden of Eden. By failing to obey the only prohibition they received from God, they experienced judgment. The death penalty passed upon them and all their descendants. Shame followed their sin and caused them to try to hide from God's sight. No longer allowed to live in paradise, they were compelled to leave it. Sorrow and laborious work replaced perfect comfort and ease. Broken fellowship with God and a marred image of God replaced perfect fellowship with God and His perfect image in them. Their son Seth was born in Adam's fallen image, and all of Adam's subsequent descendants bear Adam's image, Genesis 5 verse 3, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 47-49. Verse 4. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters, the fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. In modern terminology, meaningful wisdom is often labeled as deep. This implies something with a great deal of substance, and much more to be learned than what appears on the surface. Deep waters aptly symbolize the wisdom that lies within a godly person, Proverbs 1 verse 7. Honoring God with our minds brings the resources to perceive life correctly, to give sound advice, and to answer hard questions, Proverbs 3 verse 13, 1433. At the same time, deep water also obscures, it is difficult to know exactly what it hides. 
That murkiness is the idea being used in this proverb. Words can be taken out of context. What someone means, at first, is not easy to understand, Proverbs 18 verse 13. A later proverb will also note that it takes wisdom to uncover something that's covered up, like the secrets hidden under deep waves, Proverbs 20 verse 5. In contrast, godly wisdom, Proverbs 8 verses 8 to 9, 12 18, is like an active stream, clear, fresh, and invigorating. It flows without interruption and never dries up. The benefits are obvious and immediate. That's not to say that godly wisdom is never deep, as the modern world would describe it, Romans 11 verse 33. But part of wisdom is relating truth in ways others can more easily understand, Proverbs 1 verses 1 to 6. Jesus' words reflected deep wisdom, and they were life-giving. Many who heard him speak observed how unique this ability was, John 7 verse 46. Jesus testified that his words were spirit and life, John 6 verse 63. It is meaningful that the scriptures are called, the word of life, Philippians 2 verse 16. Worldly wisdom cannot compare to what issues from the teachings of Jesus, contained in the word of God. Verse 5. ESV It is not good to be partial to the wickeder to deprive the righteous of justice. In Hebrew, this statement literally says, lifting the face of the wicked is not good. The same idea is then restated as setting aside righteous people in matters of judgment. To uphold evil and endorse those who are evil, at the expense of those who are moral, is a serious sin. As a wise king and judge, Solomon practiced fairness on behalf of his subjects. He prosecuted the guilty and dispensed justice for the innocent. A judge may be tempted to distort justice on behalf of a wicked person because of that person's high status in society or because of his wealth or perhaps even out of fear of retribution. Scripture insists such an impulse is wrong. Just as wrong is to dismiss a righteous cause, to refuse to exonerate a poor or low-ranking member of society who is innocent. There are no excuses for the rendering of perverted or twisted justice, Proverbs 12 verse 8, 1723. Someday Jesus, the judge that stands at the door, James 5 verse 9, will take possession of the earth, and he will rule, with justice and with righteousness, Isaiah 9 verse 7. Verse 6. A fool's lips walk into a fight and his mouth invites a beating. When warning someone about speaking offensive, challenging insults, a modern English expression is often used, don't let your mouth write checks your body can't cash. This proverb presents the same basic idea. A fool who can't control their impulsive words, Proverbs 10 verse 19, 15 colon 1 4, is liable to provoke a beating. That doesn't justify the person who retaliates, Romans 12 verse 19. Yet common sense says that it's better to be quiet and avoid a conflict than to make a bad situation worse with loose lips, Proverbs 17 verses 14 and 28. Many fistfights, or worse, have been triggered by thoughtless, unnecessary verbal abuse. The Apostle James warned that, the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness, a restless evil, full of deadly poison, James 3 verses 6 and 8. In contrast, a wise man knows how to control his tongue and diffuse a potentially explosive situation. The Apostle Peter wisely counseled believers to, put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, 1 Peter 2 verse 1. This proverb deals mostly with the immediate consequences of brash talk. The following piece of wisdom notes that foolishness, in the form of uncontrolled speech, can lead to long-term or even eternal consequences, Proverbs 18 verse 7. Verse 7. A fool's mouth is his ruin and his lips are a snare to his soul. In this verse Solomon notes that a fool's mouth leads to his destruction and his lips ensnare his soul. Although a fool intends to injure others by speaking perversely, he hurts himself. His words boomerang. Psalm 7 verses 14 to 16 aptly describes what happens to the wicked person whose language is intended to hurt others. The passage states, 
behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. He makes a pit, digging it out, and falls into the hole that he has made. His mischief returns upon his own head, and on his own skull his violence descends. A fool uses offensive language to pick a fight, and he is sure to find it. However, he doesn't anticipate the serious harm his words bring upon him. Unruly youths foolishly insulted the prophet Elisha, and their words triggered Elisha's righteous indignation. He responded by pronouncing a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Immediately, two she-bears came out of the woods and mauled forty-two of the youths, 2 Kings 2 verses 23-24. Verse 8. The words of a whisperer are like delicious morsels, they go down into the inner parts of the body. Gossip is a persistent temptation, in every era, and for almost every person, Proverbs 11 verse 13, 1628. Even when someone's not excessively prone to gossiping, rumors and scandals still need to be approached with caution. Solomon's wisdom here gives one reason, they are entertaining and pleasing to our fallen nature, as is a tasty bite of food to our tongue. But, like food, that morsel goes deep inside us. The spiritual effect of taking in slander or secrets is much more serious than it might seem, at first, Romans 1 verse 29, 2 Timothy 3 verses 2-4. Scripture routinely condemns the whispering that is associated with spreading rumors, stories, and gossip. Leviticus 19 verse 16 commanded the people of Israel, You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people. Proverbs 20 verse 19 warns, Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets, therefore do not associate with a simple babbler. The Apostle Paul warned Timothy about certain younger widows who learned to be idlers, going about from house to house, and not only idlers, but also gossips and busybodies, 1 Timothy 5 verse 13. It is tragic that so many people reject the good news of salvation but eagerly devour gossip. Jesus is the truth, spoke the truth, and lived the truth, but he was despised and rejected by men, and as one from whom men hide their faces he was despised, and we esteemed him not, Isaiah 53 verse 3. This statement is repeated in Proverbs 26 verse 22. Verse 9. Whoever is slack in his work is a brother to him who destroys. Here, Solomon points out that being lazy causes as much disruption as sabotage. Projects, property, and even relationships can be damaged equally through negligence as they can through some deliberate act. In practical ways, this describes someone who fails to maintain a machine, or a building, which eventually causes it to fail. That failure can be just as sudden and just as harmful, as if the machine or building were deliberately attacked. Carelessness or apathy in a relationship might lead to just as much hurt as deliberate spite. A person who is lazy on the job robs his employer. Worse, they forget that work should be performed to the glory of God. Colossians 3 verse 17 exhorts, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Also, the same passage teaches workers to obey their earthly masters, not by way of eye service, as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and not for men, Colossians 3 verses 22-23. The practice of faithfulness applies also to one's Christian service. Instead of slacking off his labor for the Lord, a believer should be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58. Verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous man runs into it and is safe. The name of God represents his character. The righteous person finds security in all that the Lord is. Much of the book of Proverbs is encouragement to rely on godly wisdom, Proverbs 1 verse 7, instead of worldly foolishness, Proverbs 3 verse 35. Exodus 34 verse 5 tells us the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with Moses at Mount Sinai, and there he proclaimed his name. He said, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, 
slow to anger, and bounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, Exodus 34 verses 6-7. When hard times come on believers in Christ, they can take refuge in the Lord's mercy, grace, love, faithfulness, and forgiveness. Physical safety is not always part of God's plan, Job 13 verse 15, John 16 verse 33, but Christians know their ultimate hope is not in this world, 1 John 2 verse 17. He will always work everything for their good and His glory, Romans 8 verses 28-30. Proverbs 29 verse 25 affirms, The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. Believers have no reason to fear, knowing how good the Lord is. Context Summary Proverbs 18 verses 10-15 contrasts true security found in God with the illusion of wealth. As in the prior verses, Solomon explains the value of seeking out deeper understanding. This passage contains two famous biblical statements. One refers to God as a strong tower, while the other notes that physical struggles are easier to endure than spiritual and emotional trials. Verse 11. A rich man's wealth is his strong city and like a high wall in his imagination. According to this verse, being rich tempts people towards a false sense of invincibility. One reason earthly wealth can interfere with spiritual growth is when it numbs us to our dependence on God, Matthew 19 verse 23. There are obvious practical advantages to money, without question a rich person can overcome most setbacks and complications more easily than can a poor person. Yet money cannot do everything, nor is it eternal. War, economic collapse, and other factors can destroy wealth in an instant. Money cannot achieve the impossible. Thinking of wealth as a stable, immovable refuge is to live in imagination, not reality. Many individuals work feverishly to build a fortune, only to discover that trusting in wealth for security is like building house on sand. When trouble strikes, wealth and possessions may collapse as surely and as swiftly as a house built on sand collapses in a violent storm, Matthew 7 verses 26-27. Even if money lasts to the end of one's earthly life, it can't be taken along into eternity, 1 Timothy 6 verse 7, Luke 12 verses 16-21. This false perspective on money is reflected in the following proverb, Proverbs 18 verse 12, and is also echoed in Proverbs 11 verse 2 and Proverbs 16 verse 18. Proverbs 23 4 5 Cautions, Do not toil to acquire wealth, be discerning enough to desist. When your eyes light on it, it is gone, for suddenly it sprouts wings, flying like an eagle toward heaven. Amid his trials, Job reflected on the fact that he had not put excessive trust in his gold. He knew better than to feel secure in riches, Job 31 verses 24 to 25. Verse 12. Before destruction a man's heart is haughty but humility comes before honor. An earlier proverb, Proverbs 16 verse 18, warned about arrogant, self-assured pride setting a person up for the shock of brutal reality. A similar statement was also made in Proverbs 11 verse 2. This completes a trio of verses, Proverbs 18 verses 10 to 11, which helps the reader correctly assign priorities. God is our only infallible source of strength. Money and personal vanity cannot give us those assurances. In contrast to arrogance, which sets up a person for failure, humility creates the best conditions for success. Life is uncertain, so no effort is guaranteed to succeed, James 4 verses 13 to 16. Yet those who humbly seek God's will, Proverbs 1 verse 7, 3 35, and the advice of others, Proverbs 11 verse 14, 18 13, 15, 17, are more likely to achieve their goals. The Apostle Peter learned the truth of Solomon's words. He made a brash, prideful promise to the Lord that he would never forsake him even if others did, John 13 verses 36-38. His pride betrayed him. He fled when Jesus was arrested, Matthew 26 verse 56, 
and denied knowing him to a servant girl and others in the high priest's courtyard who asked, John 18 verses 15 to 18, 25 to 27. After Jesus restored Peter following the resurrection, Peter put aside personal pride, John 21 verses 15 to 19. Yet even as an apostle, Peter sometimes struggled with image and reputation, Galatians 2 verses 11 to 14. Paul advised Timothy not to appoint newly converted men to positions of spiritual authority. His concern was that power without trained discernment, Hebrews 5 verse 14, could lead such a person to become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil, 1 Timothy 3 verse 6. To the contrary, the Lord will honor a humble person. James 4 verse 10 exhorts, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will exalt you. The counsel of the world is to put yourself ahead of others. Scripture commands a believer to put themselves humbly at the Lord's disposal in the service of others, Philippians 2 verse 3. Verse 13. If one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. Among modern technology's greatest benefits is ease of communication. Yet that ability comes with dangers. It has never been easier for persons lacking experience, information, and discernment to spread their opinions to others on a large scale and without a meaningful requirement to think before broadcasting. Entire media platforms are designed around characteristics such as speed, brevity, and reach. This enables poorly understood, factually challenged, ill-considered statements to be instantly delivered to a large audience. Such risks have resulted in innumerable people making fools of themselves when hastily made comments prove deeply uninformed. Another regrettable result is modern culture's tendency to form opinions based on bite-sized, context-free headlines, reinforcing the error and causing it to spread. As a wise judge, Solomon understood the wisdom of hearing both sides of a matter before rendering a judgment. Speaking before hearing is a sign of arrogance and overconfidence, Proverbs 18 verse 12. Vain pride makes a person think he knows what to say without bothering to hear what another person has to say. This proverb, written thousands of years ago, indicates that speaking in ignorance is not a modern problem. It's an ancient problem amplified by modern technology. Jesus placed a high premium on hearing a matter carefully. He said, Take care then how you hear, for to the one who has, more will be given, and from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away, Luke 8 verse 18. The Apostle James writes in James 1 verse 19, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak. Further, in verse 26 he cautions, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Verse 14. A man's spirit will endure sickness but a crushed spirit who can bear? Life holds many challenges. Even those who place their faith in Christ are subject to hardships, John 16 verse 33. Trials flare up unexpectedly and test one's faith. This proverb points out the absolute priority of attitude, not circumstances, in determining a person's response to such difficulties. Hard times, disaster, setbacks, insults, illness, tragedy, and persecution can be endured through a positive attitude and a strong faith. That doesn't mean pretending to be happy, nor does it mean assuming things will improve simply because one is optimistic. Yet trust in Christ despite struggles make such experiences easier to bear. Negative attitudes, weak or absent faith, or pessimism can cause someone to buckle under relatively lesser stress. It's often said that humanity can endure the loss of anything except hope, and Scripture echoes that principle, Philippians 4 verses 11-13, 2 Timothy 2 verse 10. This highlights the power of trusting faith in the Gospel, Hebrews 6 verses 18-19, 1 Timothy 4 verse 10. Christians can see suffering as temporary, even when it comes in the form of godly discipline. The writer of Hebrews writes that even Christians experiencing correction should lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees, Hebrews 12 verse 12.
Christian believers can have a positive attitude even when facing trials, knowing that for those who love God all things work together for good, for those are called according to His purpose, Romans 8 verse 28. Instead of being weighed down by anxieties, the Christian can fully rely on God, knowing He cares, 1 Peter 5 verse 7. An example of a positive attitude and a strong faith is seen in Peter. When he was in prison, heavily guarded and awaiting execution, he slept so soundly that an angel had to poke him in the ribs to wake him up, Acts 12 verse 7, before leading him out of the prison. Verse 15. An intelligent heart acquires knowledge and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Solomon observes that an intelligent heart is never satisfied with their stock of knowledge. In this context, that means someone seeking godly wisdom and information, Proverbs 15 verses 14 and 32, 1728. Instead of stagnating in his current views, the humble and sincere seeker of truth looks for ever deeper knowledge. Not all people are equally equipped for deep intellectual pursuit, that simply part of God's plan for diversity within the church, 1 Corinthians 12 verses 12 to 26. Yet each person should seek as much godly knowledge as they, themselves, can comprehend, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 20. Anything God feels all believers need to understand is accessible, Romans 1 18, 20, Mark 10 verse 15, to anyone who seeks it, Matthew 7 verses 7 to 8. This verse also evokes the symbolic image of an ear tipping to notice important information. It's said that part of learning is realizing how much one does not understand. The is contrasted with an attitude assuming a person already knows all that's required to start broadcasting their opinions, Proverbs 18 verses 12 to 13. The more knowledge a wise person accumulates, the more he realizes that there is even more to be learned. This leads a truly wise person, Proverbs 1 verses 7 and 20, to soak in all the learning he can get. No one should believe he knows enough to set aside learning. Even the boy Jesus, increased in wisdom, Luke 2 verse 52. The more a believer knows, the better they can communicate the gospel. Such a person is better equipped to minister to others, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 22. 2 Timothy 3 verses 15-17 indicates that scriptures are crucial in making a believer wise and righteous, so he may be complete, equipped for every good work. The Apostle Peter also understood the importance of increasing one's knowledge. In 2 Peter 3 verse 18 he exhorts believers to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 16 a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great. The comment made here resembles other observations in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 17 verse 8, 21 14. Scripture does not endorse something unethical but notes the reality of gifts and influence. In this context, the gift is not an outright bribe, as in English, Hebrew uses separate terms for the two concepts. Using presence to create a favorable impression is a common technique, Proverbs 19 verse 6. Scripture includes multiple instances where gifts were offered to demonstrate sincere goodwill, Genesis 24 verse 53, 33 verse 10, 1 Samuel 25 verse 27, Daniel 2 verse 48. Every culture has seen examples of money purchasing favor from influential people. Rich people have sometimes gained admission for their children into prestigious colleges. Lobbyists spend large amounts of money seeking the favor of politicians. Occasionally, an overt bribe has brought a favorable decision from a corrupt judge. However, neither money nor any gift can earn one's way into heaven. The Apostle Peter writes, that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot, 1 Peter 1 verses 18-19. Eternal life cannot be bought, it is, the free gift of God, in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 6 verse 23. Context Summary Proverbs 18 verses 16-24 provides practical advice on a variety of matters. 
Other proverbs in this chapter are echoed in statements about objectivity and unity. Solomon addresses areas such as bribery, quarrels, reconciliation, the power of speech, marriage, and an unfortunate difference between the poor and the rich. The last remark in the section notes the difference between quality and quantity in friendships. Verse 17. The one who states his case first seems right, until the other comes and examines him. As a wise judge, Solomon remarks on the importance of due diligence. A person needs to hear both sides of a case before rendering a decision. Many claims and accusations seem plausible until scrutinized. What seems obvious, at first, may fall apart when looked at with a more critical eye. Of course, it might also prove true. This principle is extremely important, not only in daily life, but in spiritual matters. The Bible doesn't just endorse cautious skepticism, Acts 17 verse 11, it commands it, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5, 1 John 4 verse 1, Galatians 1 verse 8. Daily life is full of examples proving the wisdom of this proverb. Friends, neighbors, or co-workers might make accusations against each other, telling only one side of the story. But a person needs to hear from others involved, or at least learn all the relevant facts, before attempting to declare who is telling the truth. In the case of bickering church members, the same need for discernment applies. A church member may complain to the pastor about another member, but the pastor must hear from the accused before drawing a conclusion. A person may be very persuasive until his accuser tells his side of the story. In a famous incident, Solomon demonstrated a creative method of seeking more information. He showed good judgment in the case of two women, each claiming to be the mother of the same infant. Solomon's ploy was to suggest the baby be cut in half, with half given to each woman. The real mother strongly objected, while the other was willing. This made it clear which was the real mother and which was acting in spite. After examining the two claims, it was obvious who was the baby's real mother, 1 Kings 3 verses 16 to 27. Verse 18. The lot puts an end to quarrels and decides between powerful contenders. The exact nature of lots is unknown, but they were likely something like small pieces of wood or stone. The closest modern equivalent to casting lots is rolling dice or flipping a coin. Often these lots were inscribed with names, symbols, or numbers. These were placed in a receptacle or a garment, shaken, and cast. In the ancient world, these were used to solve disputes or to make close decisions. The purpose of using lots was to avoid any perception of human bias, Proverbs 16 verse 33, Joshua 14 verse 2, Jonah 1 verse 7. The term translated as quarrels here can also mean controversies or disagreements. When two sides are strongly opposed, or the consequences of the decision are very high, the only way to reach agreement might be through something like lots, or some other random selection process. Of course, even those things which happen, by chance, from the human point of view, Luke 10 verse 31, are part of God's sovereign control, Psalm 16 verse 5, Proverbs 16 verse 33. Casting lots was used for selecting territories in Canaan for the tribes of Israel, Numbers 26 55, Joshua 15. It chose the scapegoat on the Day of Atonement, of course, even those things which happen, by chance, from the human point of view, Luke 10 verse 31, are part of God's sovereign control, Psalm 16 verse 5, Proverbs 16 verse 33. Casting lots was used for selecting territories in Canaan for the tribes of Israel, Numbers 26 55, Joshua 15. It chose the scapegoat on the Day of Atonement, Leviticus 16 verses 8 and 10. Lots were used to pick out priests and Levites for sanctuary service, 1 Chronicles 24 verses 5 to 31, Nehemiah 10 verse 34, Luke 1 verse 8. Lots were even used to choose a successor to Judas, the betraying disciple who committed suicide, Acts 1 verses 15 to 19. Before casting lots to determine Judas's successor, the believers prayed for the Lord's direction. 
Two names were advanced, Barzabas and Matthias. The lot fell on Matthias, and was numbered with the eleven apostles, Acts 1 verses 23-26. Verse 19. A brother offended is more unyielding than a strong city and quarreling is like the bars of a castle. Offense from those close to us, including friends and family, tends to cut deeper and cause more pain than the same insults from strangers. The prior verses, Proverbs 18 verses 17-18, warned about rushing to judgment and the importance of objectivity. Here, Solomon sounds an alarm about the enhanced nature of conflict between brothers. In this context, that can refer either to close friends or blood relatives. Solomon poetically compares these rifts to well-defended cities or barred fortresses. By virtue of their walls, ancient cities are difficult to conquer compared to open terrain. The only two options were prolonged siege or suffering the losses of a direct assault. Likewise, a citadel or castle often includes bars meant to block entry. Quarrels that come between friends and family can be especially difficult to overcome. Jesus said a person who is angry with his brother and recalls that his brother has something against him should leave his gift at the altar and first be reconciled to his brother before offering his gift, Matthew 5 verses 23-24. The Apostle Paul prescribes forgiveness as the antidote to a broken relationship. He counsels, if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive, Colossians 3 verse 13. Verse 20. From the fruit of a man's mouth his stomach is satisfied, he is satisfied by the yield of his lips. Solomon emphasizes the importance of words in producing a good conscience. If a person's words are kind, gracious, and uplifting, he will benefit. His conscience will not trouble him, and his heart and mind will be at peace. A wise person, Proverbs 1 verse 7, 10 19, is as careful about what he says as he is about what he eats. Good, healthful food serves the stomach well. It does not upset the stomach. Similarly, good, healthful words cause the conscience to be at peace. Among other evils, Jesus referred to unhealthful words as defiling a person. He said, Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, Matthew 15 verses 17 to 20. Verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. This proverb notes the often ignored fact that words are powerful. Verbal attacks, themselves, cannot break bones. However, speech can inspire positive or negative responses. It can build up, or it can tear apart. This follows other scriptures which note the immense power of our words, Proverbs 10 verse 19, 15 verses 1 to 4, James 3 verses 5 to 8. Solomon also notes that speech comes with consequences for the speaker, Matthew 12 verse 36, Proverbs 18 verse 20. A common English proverb says, Those who live by the sword will die by the sword, adapting one of Jesus' comments, Matthew 26 verse 52. In this statement from the book of Proverbs, one might say a person who lives by their words will die by their words. Life giving, healthy, considered words can bring someone success and safety. Proverbs 15 verse 23. Poisonous, deceptive, or hurtful words can bring disaster. Proverbs 18 verse 6. The prophet Isaiah predicted that at some point, the Messiah would be oppressed and afflicted yet choose not to speak in his own defense. Old Testament prophecy compared Jesus to a lamb led to the slaughter, Isaiah 53 verse 7. When Jesus was on trial, he was completely innocent of any crime, but he did not return insults for insults. Even so, the Sanhedrin, the court that tried him, hired false witnesses and subsequently condemned Jesus to die on a cross. Believers' words may result in eternal life for those who believe the message of the gospel, 
Acts 5 verse 20. However, those who refuse to believe will suffer eternal death. Verse 22. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. While the terminology here literally speaks to a man finding a wife, the same principle applies to a woman who finds a husband. A God-honoring spouse is a true blessing, Proverbs 12 verse 4, 1914. If a man loves the Lord and chooses a wife who loves the Lord, he will enjoy a blessed marriage and God's approval. An extended section at the end of the book of Proverbs specifically praises the value of a godly wife, Proverbs 31 verses 10-31. That passage portrays an excellent wife as valuable and trustworthy. This verse rejects the claim that God considers a celibate life holier than one including marriage. The favor mentioned here does not mean that a married man is more loved by God. Rather, the Hebrew term implies that God is pleased by such a choice. Marriage is not required for any person and neither is being single, 1 Corinthians 7 verses 6-11. Whether married or single, we are called to glorify God in all we do, Colossians 3 verse 17. Paul counseled, Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him, and to which God has called him, 1 Corinthians 7 verse 17. While finding a wife is a good thing, Scripture notes that even good things can become problems when they are out of balance, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12. Solomon, the same man writing these wise sayings, Proverbs 1 verse 1, 10 verse 1, 25 colon 1, indulged in too much of a good thing. He had hundreds of wives and concubines, 1 Kings 11 verse 3. 1 Kings 11 verse 4 adds the sad commentary that, when Solomon was old his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Verse 23. The poor use entreaties but the rich answer roughly. Here, again, the book of Proverbs notes an aspect of the real world that needs to be kept in mind. This is neither a command, nor an endorsement. Rather, it's a truth about how human nature tends to indulge the wealthy while being impatient with the poor. Those perceived as poor often feel they must ask, or literally beg, when speaking with others, while those who are rich might be tempted towards arrogance and derision. Often, when the poor beg for help, people who are well able to respond with help answer the poor with harsh words. Money can make some people rude, coarse, and cruel in their treatment of less fortunate people. It seems the rich man who lived high off the hog mistreated the poor man Lazarus. Although the rich man ate luxuriously every day, Lazarus was allowed only a few scraps from the rich man's table, Luke 16 verses 19-21. That unfortunate reality is also a reminder. Many proverbs recorded by Solomon warn about the financial risks brought on by foolishness, Proverbs 6 verses 10-11, 10 verse 4, 11 verse 24, 13 verse 18, 28 colon 19. A person who acts against wisdom and common sense puts themselves at greater risk of relying on, entreaties, translated from a word literally meaning, pleadings. From a spiritual perspective, this verse can also be interpreted as a contrast between those who are poor in spirit versus those who are arrogant, Matthew 5 verse 3, Proverbs 16 verse 19. Being poor in spirit is a reference to humility, someone who depends on the Lord to meet their needs. Such a person will naturally gravitate towards a gentler, calmer, and less entitled attitude. Verse 24. A man of many companions may come to ruin but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Merely having large numbers of friends does not always mean having many deep, committed allies in times of need. In this context, a man of many companions suggests a person who seeks popularity and shallow relationships. When times are good, those kinds of associates can be a source of pride or entertainment. But when times are rough, one finds out quickly who their true friends really are. Even a person well-known and popular can find themselves on hard times, made all the harder when their relationships are superficial.
This proverb is echoed in the English expression, a friend in need is a friend, indeed. The meaning is that being willing to meet another person's need is a sign of true friendship. False and shallow companions don't act like friends, at all, when the relationship might cost them something. When the prodigal son was wasting his inheritance on a raucous lifestyle, he probably had a wide circle of companions, just in the sense mentioned in this proverb. However, when he was penniless, he began to be in need, Luke 15 verse 14. Consequently, he took a lowly job feeding pigs, Luke 15 verse 15. His plight was so bad that he longed to eat what the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything, Luke 15 verse 16. Whatever throng of party mates he might have had before, none of them were there to help when he was in desperate straits. True friends can be even more loyal than blood family. Although Solomon's observation identifies anyone who is a true friend in time of trouble, the description certainly fits the Lord Jesus. He is the believer's close, true friend, who promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you, Hebrews 13 verse 5. End of Proverbs 18 Please note The material used in this post, video is from biblaref.com which is from God Questions Ministries and is posted here to be read by Immersive Reader in the Edge browser. If you copy this material please follow these rules. Content from biblaref.com may not be used for any commercial purposes, or as part of any commercial work, without explicit prior written consent from God Questions Ministries. Any use of our material should be properly credited, please make it clear the content is from biblaref.com. Bibleref.com content may not be altered, modified, or otherwise changed unless such changes are specifically noted.